Welcome to the Java implementation of the queue. So in this video, we'll see how to implement queue out of two stacks in Java. Okay. Since we are going to use uh, stack Java collection class called stack, so we'll be importing Java dot util dot stack. Then uh, Java stacks actually they internally store only objects, so they don't store any primitive data types. Okay, so we'll uh, make our uh, classes public so that uh, we have a main as well as part of this class. Okay, so we we would have a old stack and new stack as private. Members, right? Which takes integer objects. Old stack, then private stack, which stores integer objects. New stack, okay. And uh, we would also need a top element, okay. And uh, we would also need a size, size of to store the size of the queue, right? And then we'll have a constructor. In the constructor, we will initialize old stack equal to new stack. And new stack equals new stack which stores integers. Okay, fine. We'll have to initialize top element to minus one and uh, we'll do the same thing for size right we are good here now let's try to implement the nq function so there is no de destructor concept in case of a uh, queue of course we do have the finalize method uh, which is not required here okay so we'll go with the nq functionality so public boolean and queue which takes a element okay and uh, over here we need to we'll have a boolean for the return so let's say it is initially true okay there could be exceptions so we would uh, wrap with the try catch blocks okay and uh, we are going to push the entry into the new stack okay over here there is one small correction so what we need to do is the java stacks actually only stores the uh, objects they don't store any uh, primitive data type like integer so what we need to internally do is we need to wrap that integer within a integer object we can do like this we are using anonymous object here Okay, so we have constructed an integer and then uh, we are passing that integer. We are pushing that integer. Okay, in case of any exception, right? So we can catch that exception probably over here. We can say we can mark return as false. Okay, and uh, probably for the user, we can also print something, some print some error message, right? So we can say some error occurred. Okay, good. And uh, we can return the return over here. Fine. So we are done with the NQ. So we'll try to implement the DQ functionality. DQ. So DQ doesn't take any parameters. Okay. So we have, uh, we'll initialize the top element to minus one. Of course, this is initialized uh, to minus one in the constructor. But uh, we'll ensure that it is initialized to minus one, right? So now we need to check if the whole stack is empty. If whole stack is empty, only then we need to fill the whole stack, right? That's what we discussed in the first part of this video, right? When this is empty and 
while new stack has some values so while new stack is not empty right so what we could do we could use the top element here top element equal to new stack dot peak peak is similar to top in c++ so which would return the topmost entry from the stack without removing the entry from the stack okay otherwise rest are same okay so we have this uh, topmost element and the top element now we need to push that entry into the old stack so old stack dot push top element okay we are done so now we need to remove that uh, pop that entry from the new stack we are done and now at this point we need to retrieve that uh, topmost entry from this whole stack and we need to return that right so before that we are checking if uh, whole stack is not empty we come over here we retrieve the topmost entry like this whole stack dot peak okay so over here again there is one change right so peak would return a integer object as opposed to primitive data so let's accept that value in a integer i now what we could do so we could actually uh, i mean in fact actually we can uh, we are going to return it right we are going to return a, a primitive integer so so what we need to do is we need to say top element equals to i dot int value which is a function exposed by provided by integer class integer object okay so so far so good and uh, we also need to pop that entry from the old stack old stack dot pop right so now we have that entry in the top element Okay, we can return the top element. In fact, actually, there are there is a possibility that there could be some exception, especially parsing exception or some something of that set could happen within this uh, loop. So it's a good idea to uh, perform a try catch here. Okay. Okay, we are done, and uh, we'll move ahead with the. is empty function public boolean is empty okay is empty we need to check the emptiness of the both the stacks right old stack is empty and new stack is empty then we know our queue is empty otherwise we know our queue has some value we can return false here okay and uh, we'll see how to implement the size okay so over here we need to check the retrieve the size of whole stack plus retrieve the size of new stack okay we are done so now we need to return that size okay so now let's see how this can be used how our queue can be used public static void main which takes a string arguments queue queue equal to new queue okay so over here we can we'll have a loop for so let's say i mean what is the how many whether the queue is empty now of course it it's going to be empty but let's put our uh, functions to use and see how it works okay so we can say is the queue empty is the queue empty so we are asking a question so we'll see how our queue responds so is empty okay fine So now we'll try to enqueue some values. So let's start with the one, and then let's say int less than six, so that it enters some five values at at least, right? Five values. 
so we will try to print some message as well right so we'll say q dot n q int i into 10 so that it looks easy on our eyes right system dot out dot println and over here we say n cubed so the value that we are going to print is i into 10 right plus we are going to say n cubed value into the q ok that's it we are done and now we are going to dequeue it so before that we will retrieve the size equal to q dot size we retrieved it and we are going to print the let's say we will start from 0 and less than size plus plus i and we are going to print a message dequeued so we are going to print the directly call the invoke that function right dq that's it and we are going to dequeued from from the queue right that's it we have dequeued so we have used our uh, empty is empty function size function and queue and dq functions pretty much all the functions let's compile and see how it goes okay cool so we don't seem to have any error okay so java queue so is the queue empty it is true initially it was uh, true and then it enqueued 10 20 30 40 and 50 and when we dequeued it is uh, returning in the first in first out sequence 10 20 30 and 40 so that ends our third part of this video thank you for watching this uh, video tutorial for more such videos, please subscribe and watch future videos. Thank you.